Life in prison is really hard. All my family miss me and are always crying on the phone, telling me to um, behave and stop coming to prison, you know. And it's hard on my mom because I haven't really seen her in like two and a half years now. I've been roaming around the NT. Yeah. And my mom's like getting old now. Hunting, fishing, being around my family, watching my nieces and nephews grow up. That's that's what I miss. I just wanna go home. You know, I get to be with my family, be with my my elders and just try my best to get my son back. I've missed out on a, yeah, quite a bit. Missed out on my grandmother's funeral. Missed out on my niece's funeral. I missed out on a lot. And if, and if there were no, were no elders coming to see us, then maybe probably I would have been dead. Each and every time I see, you know, the elders, they put a smile on our faces. They bring joy, they bring everything, you know. They help us get through our time, our day. I've been on the program since uh, 2000. It started in 2005, so 13 years now. Um, the Elders Visiting Program has grown from, we started, started off with four communities, there's now about 14 uh, involved in it, so it, it's grown, it, it's big now, it's been successful. The Elders come to visit us is pretty good because they reconnect us back to the country, tell us what's going on there and everything, the work that's happening over there, it's good. And we get to tell them about our problems, what's going on in here. It's very important that we have to come and talk to them about their country, their culture, their family members, and their community and their country. You know, we talk to them about many things, but we also, you know, we connect with their family as soon as we leave here, we go back and pass the message on to their families back home. We go and sit down and talk with our young fellas and tell them that, um, you know, your family's so concerned about you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be um, doing this, you know. When, you know, when your parents or families talk to you about going to Alice Springs, you know, alcohol is the number one thing that gets, it, gets you into trouble. And we want to be able to let you know that your family cares for you. There are families out there that want you back there and this is no place to be. When I was young we didn't have a stable home so I moved over to the TV Island to live with my uncle. When I came back to Darn, started hanging around the wrong people and getting into trouble and then I ended up going in and out of juvenile centres and then didn't get to go back there for years. For me, having connection with the elders, it's really good and it's helping me get through my time. Um, when I had, when I was in Alice, I didn't have that. 
didn't have any of the elders come to see see me. They they are the strongest person that I can barely rely on, you know, because they teach us everything. We we try not to think anything negative about these prisoners, um, and the reason why is because, you know, they when they come out to the communities, they they are our people. But when they're in prison, they're our people as well. They are the people that know, that know why they're here. And they would have the answers on when they come out of prison on what they want to do. But we can guide them and help them. They can relate to us more, um, being family member as well. Um, and they're open, our discussions are open. We talk about a, a lot of things including the challenges that they face in, in prison and out of prison. I've been on many um, prison visits now and um, sort of, um, I never really liked these kind of places, but you know, deep down in my heart, there is something there, there somewhere that you'll be able, because I used to work with um, young mothers and young babies, and somewhere there, you know, you've got a feeling that you want to be able to reach out to these young fellas and to talk to them, you know, encourage them, encourage them about um, their way, their families, and their attitude. What I really enjoyed about the program, the Elder Visiting Program, is that. You know, even though there's um, there's young people who, in in these kind of places that have um, lack of education, lack of support from families and community, and we want to be able to be the one to be able to come and support them, and you know, be the person to talk to them and encourage them, so when they'll be able to come out, be released, you know, maybe they'll have a um, change of attitude, maybe. Oh, sometimes it works that way, sometimes it doesn't, and you know, it's back to the old way again. And we want to, but then again, you still have to never give up, never give up, always keep on encouraging them. When we get to say goodbye, it's pretty sad that we're not around them. And then we start thinking about our bush, you know, being home with them. You know, listening to the bird, going fishing, going hunting, you know, doing all those things, you know, doing our culture, dance, and everything like that, like being there for us and for the elders, you know, and for our kids. When we started in 2005, uh, I had no expectation of what we can achieve. Now 13 is on. Um, we're still working towards the change, but uh, there has been a, a significant change. Um, but you know, you can see there's gardens, there's ceremonial poles. We do our cultural uh, ceremonies here, smoking ceremony. So there's been um, a lot of improvement, um, and also in the program department, uh, people are learning uh, uh, the cultural appropriate ways of doing things now. There's still some challenges uh, ahead uh, that we've got to all work on. Perhaps we, will, we may never find a solution, but there is also, there is always a way forward. And it's that moving forward that, that will uh, become uh, better for everyone. My dream is for me to get out of here. My goal is for me to go back home to be with my son.